much that we put out on the internet regarding various things, in particular two uh, topics. One is which we were written by a metropolitan friend, and then also questioning the condition date and the, uh, of the body of the Holy Orthodox Church in North America, our Holy Synod, which also then includes the diocese of each of the members of the Synod. Uh, I just want to clarify a few things here, so I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, if you have some questions, you can ask. Accusations have been laid out on the internet. But people, I, and I say this to all of us, words have meaning. The Orthodox Church for centuries has defined terminology. From the controversy of Homoousius and Homoousius uh, in, in the Greek, to the Philadelphia way, to one nature, two nature, one person, uh, etc., uh, with the monopolites and monoplotites, with the historians, areas, and the church took centuries, sometimes hundreds of years, to define and clarify terminology. Now what we see happening on the internet is these words are bandied about, heresy, uncanonical, and so forth and so on. Well, words have meaning. And you all are responsible. Whoever writes these words are they're responsible for what they're saying. And there are consequences for saying these things. And this applies to clergy as well as to lay that when people write these things, then you better start thinking about if you're writing them and you're in a church that you say is uncanonical, then how dare you come forward and take Holy Communion? Because you are saying that this church is not, should not have a prerogative, it doesn't have the grace of God that it says it has. Likewise, when you accuse the bishop of heresy and it's uns unsubstantiated, that's been the problem in this whole issue. That these accusations are laid out there, there is nothing substantial to hold up under scrutiny. I wrote a letter and I submitted it to the bishop to ask him if I could send it out to the clergy, first of all, and to the monastery. Metropolitan friend liked my letter. He asked the other bishops to see if they would agree to that. One bishop said he didn't think we should send it out at this time. There is an order that here uh, our bishops are accessible. If you got a question, if you don't like something they said, you have questions about what their positions are, about whether it's the Holy Orthodox Church in North America or the Holy Orthodox in the of Boston, you have access to your bishop. I have yet to see one bishop turn down a request to meet with anybody. And then all these things that are floating around, uh, and I will begin with uh, the letter that was sent out by the dean, signed by the dean that was Father Pondiris Karras, Father Constantine Parr, and Father George Kucherian, a letter sent out to the bishops demanding certain things. Now, the dean, either he's represented the, the clergy, and of course, my question was on it, they said they didn't represent the clergy, they represented the representatives of the bishop. Well, you don't send a letter out of the nature that they sent out, if they're representing the bishop, not one of them sent a letter to the bishop for approval before it was sent out. So in whose name are they speaking? They're certainly not speaking as deep. And they show here a lack of understanding. They show really, truly, the real, there's a different reason for all these accusations that are floating about. And those reasons are coming forth. The other thing that they made an accusation about, you know, Metropolitan Moses and Bishop Sergeant have petitioned to be accepted by Polynicos, the uh, Archbishop Polynicos in Greece, because their understanding is they must belong to the Greek Orthodox Church. Unless they're members of the Greek Orthodox Church, 
turns out everything falls apart. They have also, and Father Pani was in Paris, in Toronto, is the one who is putting this out um, that, and I know where it's coming from, but anyway, he's the one who's been putting it out that Metropolitan Moses and Bishop Sturgeon were expelled from the Holy Synod. That's totally false. In fact, I will say it before God, it's a lie. Now, they're, they're saying things that are totally false. For your information, uh, and this so that you realize, there were letters that were sent back and forth between the Holy Synod, that is, Metropolitan Friend, Metropolitan Tire, and Bishop Demetrius. Letters that were sent out, there were four letters that were sent to Metropolitan Lord. In those letters, the issues were discussed with him, and he was asked, because he had petitioned without the blessing, without the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, he was asked that, in fact, the political bishop uh, afforded the canon when a bishop has something that's petition, that he's liable to be the prop in his community. Polemicos bishops ask our bishops, please be lenient with them. So our bishops wrote and told Metropolitan Moses and Bishop Surgeon, write a letter of apology and we will continue as normal. We'll still be members of the city. Just write a letter of apology for your action. They refused. They refused four times to respond to the letter. Then they were advised, since you refuse to write a letter of apology, we therefore will not be able to vote on the synod until we vote on your own action. You have said we don't want to be conciliar, we don't want to live in the spirit of unity, therefore, until you show yourself a remorse and repentance, you can't vote on the synod. They therefore took that and made it known that they were expelled from the Holy Spirit. That is totally false. Now, Metropolitan of France has asked and has said, because we met with him yesterday with the clergy in the area, don't try to respond to all these things on the internet, because it's a no doubt. You write, and then it just continues to snowball. And he goes north. Mark Whedon, down in Florida, a parishioner at the Florida parish, had written an article which Father Tommy was posted on his website. And then he even said, This article should be read because it's so good. Well, Mark Whedon, sad to say, doesn't even believe in him. And an article was written that was not being disseminated on the internet. It was being passed out uh, slowly. It was passed it out and I'll hand it out to, to the faithful here uh, when it gets finalized. Which points out all the fallacies of Mark Reed's presentation, which are totally false. It's all fallacy. This is the problem. And most people, not everybody, sits and reads all the articles. And of course, Metropolitan and Fred uh, and the other bishops have not responded with every issue that's come up. We really, really remain rather silent. And <coughs> Metropolitan Matthias wrote this position paper. It's a 14 page, 15 page position paper regarding the wake folks, the wake sleep. And in it, he shows the falsehood of all the accusations that are brought against Metropolitan. So I ask you all here, first, if you say things, when the consequences come, don't become a victim and say, Lord, it's me, look at me, you're being so mean and nasty. You know, you stand there and make accusations against our bishop. You call them all kinds of names. And then you say, oh, I really didn't mean that. Well, then it's time to learn the English language and know that the words have meaning. And there will be consequences if this continues. So I suggest to all of you, you know, you got an issue to see your spiritual father, talk to the bishop, 
They're available. They can help answer any question. And be careful what you say on the internet because you are accountable before God. So if you throw out all these accusations, you, you know, be responsible for the consequences that may come.